Uh, kia ora everybody, my name is Felipe and thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'm really happy and blessed to be here sharing some of my PhD findings that summarizes four years of research that was conducted along a beautiful advisory team from Dr. Moni Waite and Associate Professor Nerina Scarinci. As you can see from, from the title, my PhD project um, is exploring the nature of engagement for families of young children with communication difficulties. And um, although you might find some of the strategies that we talk about today uh, may be useful for working with all the children, perhaps, or uh, maybe in different settings. So just keep an eye on that, but I have to keep it to the population of interest of my PhD findings. So that is my email. If you like to discuss further on any of these findings or would like to touch base regarding some of the studies that are Three of, of the four studies of my PhD project are currently under review, and the fourth one is in preparation. So this is an outline of today's um, session, conversation, or webinar, however you want to call it. So we're talking about family-centered telepractice early intervention and a few of the uh, ideas around the evidence, the advantages, challenges, and what do families and professionals think about telepractice engagement and building engagement in the telepractice environment. A few of the strategies to facilitate engagement during telepractice interaction and how to measure engagement with, I think will be interesting to talk about it. And then we have a very nice and small and brief and easy wrap up session slash quiz for you. So pay attention and um, hopefully we have enough time for our Q and A session. So we're kicking off by briefly telling me a bit about myself. So as you already notice, my English is not a native English. Uh, so I do apologize early if some words are not clearly enough to you all. Like Celia Cruz, a uh, Cuban salsa singer said, my English is not very good looking. But who am I? I graduated from the University of Valparaíso um, in Chile in 2008. And Chile is this very long country over here, surrounded by the Pacific and the Andes mountain in this side um, with our neighbors, with Argentina. So I'm a speech language pathologist by background and uh, audiologist as well, because it's a joint degree back home. I am a PhD candidate like Annette and Mel just introduced me to you all. I am, um, that, that's me when I graduated in 2008. I'm really proud father of Matteo, a 21 month old baby at the moment. And my research interests are around telehealth, of course, virtual reality, augmented reality, information communication, technology, communication, disability, as a whole range of, of, of uh, impairments for people across the lifespan, uh, patient-centered care, research development and innovation, and also have some personal hobbies around football, music and uh, beer, of course. And uh, that's briefly about myself, so you can get to know me a bit better. Uh, so moving on with, with the actual presentation, and I'm going to close that tab. Sorry for that, but I can see all of those notifications that I'm trying to get rid of. So kicking off with family center telepractice early intervention. So as you may already know, the provision of family center services has long been recommended in early intervention. So family center early intervention builds on the strengths of families and recognizes them as key agents in, in the child's intervention. And uh, while encouraging parent engagement, family engagement and participation during early intervention sessions, we develop a partnership with them and uh, not just parents and caregivers, but sometimes with all their family members that are present in the child's environment. And we collaborate with one another and we all become jointly responsible for the child's development. Research today has emphasized and stressed on the importance of family participation and family engagement, basically because we already know that parents and family members uh, spend significant amount of time with children. So they are the experts in the child. They best know the child's interests and characteristics and their temperament as well. Unfortunately, for some of, of these families, 
access to timely and targeted early intervention may be difficult. And you already know, there may be some shortage of professionals, transportation issues, waiting lists sometime, um, limited resources that limit the ability or reduce the ability to satisfy and meet the child and family's needs for specialized care. So in order to overcome some of these barriers, delivering professional services, speech pathology services via the internet, which is telepractice, has been reported as a feasible alternative for these families. However, um, despite a growing body of research suggesting that telepractice can be as effective as in-person intervention, professionals, we are still somewhat reluctant to how to engage families effectively through this environment, through the telepractice environment. And professionals have been concerned about the lack of physical contact impacting in the engagement of families through telepractice. Um, in fact, some professionals have described telepractice as a format in which professional contact decreases that lacks human touch. And that also in, in an environment in which they feel that they are unable to establish professional relation or effective relationship with families. So these professional concerns about the difficulties to engage with families via telepractice set the scene for my PhD project. So my research, as you already know, aimed to explore the nature of engagement in this setting, the telepractice health intervention setting. And you are all aware that the current worldwide pandemic catalyzed a huge uptake of telepractice and research studies that have been published in the last two years have restated some of these professional concerns about the impact of telepractice on the family engagement during telepractice services, but also professionals and families still perceive telepractice as the second best option and perceive telepractice as a supplement rather than a primary mode of service delivery. So you may all even had those feelings or perceptions about telehealth when you had to shift uh, quickly shift to telepractice. And that is the main reason why we're having this conversation today about telepractice and how to optimize the engagement of families and likely enhance the outcome of that child and those families. So we need to be very academic at the beginning of the talk just to provide you with a bit of evidence of telepractice in pediatric communication difficulties. So telepractice, to set a common ground, has been defined as the application of telecommunication technology to deliver speech language pathology and audiology services remotely by linking clinicians to clients to families for assessment, intervention, consultation, coaching, education, and so on. So telepractice typically involves the transmissions of data, images, sound, and video via two principal modes, which is the synchronous and the asynchronous mode. So in the synchronous mode, the professional and the family interact, as you can see in this figure that I just created for my PhD and that I've included in this talk. So it represents the different interactions that can happen. You can have one professional working with the family with the help of another professional in some sort of a multidisciplinary session that can happen with just one click. We can include our support staff that can be remotely or can be on site with the family, like a therapy assistant supporting the family on site to connecting directly with the professional remotely. And we also have the option of including additional family members like siblings, grandparents, an additional parent or caregiver that can join the sessions remotely from the workplace during lunchtime or whatever. So this is the synchronous telepractice where the interaction happens live. But we also have the asynchronous mode, which is basically where data are stored and then uploaded somewhere, typically to a cloud service for later revision by another professional, by the family, or the clients. So you can prepare some handouts, some videos, some therapy materials for those families to access them when they have some extra time, some spare time. They can review these resources later outside the appointment and you can interact the, through these other methods outside a live interaction. So you can use uh, email, you can use uh, smartphone, tablet applications, you can use web-based software all of those interactions could be considered 
asynchronous technologies. And the combination of both, obviously the synchronous and the asynchronous mode of communication is called the hybrid model. It can also be described a hybrid model combining in-person and telepractice services that takes the best of both worlds. So for you to have an, uh, an idea of the literature that has been published on communication difficulties across ages, you can clearly see the trend. And this is a systematic search that I did in September this year to show how the uptake of telepractice has been increasing with a few spikes in this curve due to um, the swine flu, due to grants targeting telepractice research, and obviously the current worldwide pandemic. So up to September 2021, there were 122 studies published, but obviously this number has increased. And when we break down this literature, all of these articles that are more over 600 studies, we just analyze the pediatric ones. And you can see that some areas have obviously explored further, such as autism spectrum disorder with 63 studies. Um, targeting the population of children with autism spectrum disorders. 53 studies looking at children with speech and language difficulties. A nice group of studies targeting uh, caregiving training and coaching for, th for these two groups of, of, of children. And the third sort of diagnosis or condition could be hearing loss that has been um, studied more depth in more depth than, than the other sort of diagnosis. Um, so this is for you to have a look at how the literature is, ta or what the literature is targeting or research is targeting. All right. So moving on more specifically to today's conversation is about engagement. What is engagement? So because we are all here and it's ne this presentation needs to be quite engaging, I'm going to open up a Mentimeter survey. So this is a world cloud and I'm quickly changing my screen to this Mentimeter um, word cloud. So I'm going to put up this QR code if you are on your smartphone so you can scan this QR code and it'll take you straight to the survey or you can go to menti.com on your computer, on your laptops, on your tablets, on your iPads, on your smartphones and enter this code. So what I'm asking you all is to using three words, to use three words to define or describe what engagement in early intervention means to you. So I'm going to start the survey and you have the instructions up here. So go to menti.com and use the following code and we'll see when people are joining us. So how would you define or describe engagement in early intervention. This is completely anonymous, so feel free to say whatever you feel, you truly feel about engagement in pediatrics. And we can see how this um, word cloud is, is being displayed. And this is just great. Thank you so much for putting up all your input about it. The bigger they were, the more people have said something similar. And this is great. Thank you to these 25 that have already participated. That is just fantastic. So we can see a clear trend with participation. We can see some things about trust about joint attention, back and forth interaction. We can see enjoyment there. So telepractice needs to be um, an engaging and interactive, a fun environment as your in-person sessions are. So just keep that in mind. We're just changing the setting. We're not changing the great professionals that you all are building trust, we have here family, we have en enjoyment, interest, collaboration, partnership, but we can also see some other things about hard work. We have some things about tiring. We have some things about 
what else am I missing on the same page? So parent using strategies, hard work, holistic, meaningful, relevant, connection, very key words there. And I apologize if I can't understand some of these terms using Maori, uh, but I can imagine that it's being culturally uh, centred, which is which is key. Felipe Fano equals family. All right. Thank you for that. But yes, family centred. It is very true. Involved. So we can see clear trends in this activity. So I'm just moving back to the slideshow so we can continue. But this is extremely true. All of this is engagement for good and for bad. All of this is engagement. It is. It can be tiring. It can be hard work and you'll you'll realize that if you haven't done so it is back and forth it is a reciprocal communication between um, parents and, and and professional it's culturally safe it is imitation it, it is connection so all of this and i'm going to share these these responses with you all after this presentation so you can get this work out for you for yourselves as well so thank you so much again for sharing all of that and i'm going to give you the definitions that we can find in the literature that pretty much resonate with whatever you, with all the, what you have said. So in the pediatric mental health literature, Gillian King in a scoping review uh, defined engagement as a multifaceted state of affective, cognitive, but also behavioral investment in the client, client role of the intervention process. So it's not static, it's over the intervention process. In pediatric speech language pathology, engagement was defined as a complex, multifaceted state where parents are ready and empowered to take an active role in the child's intervention. So again, emphasizing the key role of parents and caregivers in their child's intervention, which doesn't necessarily is the same in in-person. Sometimes parents bring you the kid, bring the child in for you to fix them, which can be done pretty much in the telepractice environment because you are not there. And in telepractice early intervention, one of my PhD studies defined telepractice engagement as a collaborative partnership in which children, families and professionals develop a therapeutic relationship through communication during like inside telepractice sessions, but also outside therapy sessions. When you're interacting in the telepractice environment, you don't just stop interacting with the family once you close the Zoom meeting. You continue being in touch with them. You have other channels of communication. You are in touch with families more regularly compared to in-person services. You can chat with them through text messages. You typically email them, therapy plans, resources. You plan together offline outside the session and you're planning which activities you are doing in the live session. So all of that communication is increased and it increases inside and outside therapy sessions. So it is important that we bear in mind all of that. So as you can see, engagement is a relational um, construct that recognizes the dynamic and contractual nature of family and professionals. So family engagement can be observed through different behaviors like just sharing information, attending to the sessions, being involved, actively involved during sessions, but also practicing carryover intervention activities into the home environment, establishing relationship with, with you all. So all of those, all those are signs of engagement. And as you can see, engagement is complex. It is a complex contract. And there will be as many shapes of engagement as family professional relationships exist. So don't feel bad that you don't have the same level of engagement with all of your families because you need to have a unique relationship with all of them. And the engagement is the engagement that works for the family and works for you individually. Don't compare your engagement levels, your engagement across all of your clientele. That's a very important message. And just for you to notice, you may find all of these concepts trying to define engagement in the literature and you might use all of these concepts interchangeably. So that is important for you to bear in mind as well. But as you can see, and hopefully you have all realized that engagement is challenging, but also has some advantages. 
So I'm going to touch slightly on, on that. I'm brushing off on the advantages of telepractice in providing family center services. So first thing of all, in um, telepractice, um, it is more family centered in a way because during telepractice sessions, we are not physically there on the same side with the family. So it is the child's parents, caregivers and all the family members that have to take the driver's seat that need to become the key agents, the more active participants in their child's intervention, providing them with direct on-site support. In this scenario, we professionals change a bit of our role. We have no, now a role of more for like a parent coach. We support the parent, we give them intervention strategies, we explain, we coach them, we guide them on how to work with the child, as we sometimes could do in in-person visit. But they are more involved in the child intervention, and they they are the only person that can interact directly with the child because we are not there to rescue them if something happens. So, secondly, family uh, telepractice obviously enhances the parent caregiver competency, and that is very linked to what we're just talking about. Families have perceived equally supported through telepractice, but it, they also feel more capable of and empowered in supporting their child and, and satisfying and meeting the child's needs compared to in-person intervention. Just because of the same, they have to be actively involved. They have this, the opportunity of have this hands-on hands approach. They become rapidly upskilled in telepractice just by observing how it's done or just by practicing it directly and live with the child. But also, it's, it enhances their competency because they are practicing at home and also with the same everyday resources that they typically use on a daily basis with their child. Telepractice also offers increased flexibility in terms of scheduling and managing appointments, facilitating regular attendance, quickly changing an appointment if the child is unwell or something happens. It provides further opportunities for additional family members, like we talk about, to participate in sessions. And from a professional development perspective, it also allows us to video record sessions that could be easily reviewed later. We can reflect on what we're doing and the way that we are doing that and therefore improve our current practice. We can do it along with families. We can watch, we can set a time to watch how the sessions are happening typically similar to what happens when you are, are doing some simulation in university, when you're working with students, that you can video record a, a, a simulated experience and then you have these debriefing opportunities. You can video record your own sessions and reflect upon those sessions later. Uh, like we touch base on this, it involves the entire family unit and not just the single parent or caregiver or both parents that bring the child into the clinic, into the center. It also facilitates the natural interaction and observing and parent child's interacting and parents and children interacting within the natural, the family's natural social and communication environment. Um, it is not anymore an artificial setting like it is bringing the child to a center or, or a clinic. So, because we are there visiting the child and family into the home environment, we also need to bear in mind to, that we have to be extremely respectful for the family's identity, for the family's culture, for the family's values and beliefs. So we, all, we are visitors in the family's environment, so we need to be respectful of that as well. And lastly, telepractice also encourages joint planning. If you remember what I mentioned before, parents are the experts in the child. So in telepractice, it is extremely important that we plan together with families. They are the experts in the child. So we need to, to, share, to set shared goals together. So the goals are important for the family and the family also considers that it's important to achieve those goals and it's important for them to work for these works. So parents can share the expectations, motivations for intervention and they provide some input into the goals they can update us on the progress of the child uh, in the time that we haven't seen each other. They can suggest activities, they can suggest interventions, strategies that can suit the child's interest and preferences. So it's important that we communicate with families and we set a dedicated time to interact with them, to plan 
Um, so it is important. So even though there are certain advantages of telepractice for elder intervention services, there are also a few challenges that I'd like to touch on before we move on to a more um, a more hands-on approach with strategies for you to better engage with families and children. So as you may already know, there are challenges to engagement in, in regards to family participation. For some clinicians, for some families, it is not the same. Some clinicians, some families still remain unclear and particularly parents and caregivers remain unclear how they can support their child through telepractice. What is their role in telepractice? So clinicians have also reported that they experience difficulties in supporting and encouraging family participation in telepractice environment. Other literature, like I mentioned before, pre-COVID and within COVID have reported that telepractice is still seen as the second best option, a supplement rather than the best option or that at certain times or for some families could be the only option for those living in remote communities in rural settings. On top of that, there is a huge challenge in terms of the reduced physical interaction or even the absence of physical interaction. We struggle more uh, to provide this physical comfort that we are used to provide in in-person settings. Families and clinicians feel that they can connect more in, a, in an in-person setting, but um, with hard work, through preparation and through these strategies that we might um, discuss in a few more slides, we can overcome, we can compensate for this reduction in the physical interaction. So another difficulty, another challenge to engagement during telepractice is the poor conceptualization of engagement. And you already have noticed that when we did this work cloud, there are, it is such a complex contract that involves so many aspects that it is obviously difficult to conceptualize. So for example, in the literature, engagement has been conceptualized as satisfaction and has been measured as professional and parent interaction, has been measured as rapport, has been measured as self-efficacy and involvement. So it is hard, given it is a, such a complex concept, the conceptualization of engagement, it is hard and you might struggle to find the right literature for what you are trying to find. And lastly, the measurement, the measurement of engagement, it is another way, uh, another challenge for telepractice engagement, mainly because the current tools available for measuring engagement have mostly um, recycled, have been adapted from different fields such as psychology or in-person early intervention. So there may be some differences in the way that we engage with families in in-person setting or in mental health settings with the way that we engage with families in speech language pathology and the way that we engage with families, particularly in the telepractice environment. So those differences, although unique uh, features of telepractice, we might just uh, refer to them in a few more slides, so bear with me. So after defining engagement, knowing what the advantages are, what the challenges are, one of my studies obviously wanted to know what families and professionals thought about engagement, how they perceive engagement. So basically uh, in this interview study, we conducted 72 interviews with uh, matched diets and uh, professional family diets. And they, um, after thematic analysis, we identify five common themes about telepractice engagement that I'm going to quickly touch base on these and, and reflect on these five themes. So the first theme is that the delivery of family-centered telepractice is in, um, essential for engaging children and their families. And these are the sub-themes, but these sub-themes make a lot of sense just by reading them. So placing the family at the center of the intervention facilitated child and family engagement. We need to deliberately build a unique relationship with them to engage better with families. We need to collaborate with families inside but also outside telepractice in order to facilitate engagement. And we need to highlight the parent's role in facilitating child and uh, engagement, but also carry over beyond the telepractice session. And these are two quotes from uh, professionals, but also from families that truly represent this first theme. We haven't, I guess, gotten a stronger relationship, but also it's what worked for us and it's what worked for the family and the family is happy with that arrangement. So that is key. It, wo it won't necessarily be the highest uh, engagement level that you feel, 
but it is what works for the family and you need to accept that and embrace that to give you a bit of peace and uh, the family said doing it the intervention via telehealth what helped me it's that I'm a lot more involved perhaps so I have to be a lot more engaged it's only half an hour to an hour with the professional once a week but I'm still doing that with her with her schoolwork and her homework for me to be involved and know what I'm doing it's definitely beneficial so that truly represents the key role of parents actively participating in sessions but also supporting the child outside the session which is beautiful so the second theme was about that engagement in telepractice was variable as you may already notice and was affected by individual characteristics and factors from the child from parents and also the professional so child engagement was variable throughout the telepractice interaction so one of the quotes is about he was happy when he came out. When I call him to come out to the session, he came out and he goes, it's my turn to talk. It's my favorite time of the week, having telepractice sessions. But at the same time, another family said that we have some days where he's just not in the mood to engage much. And we've got to work a bit harder to get him do things. So child engagement is variable and it'll depend on the day. Regardless of how pretty, how beautiful your plan is for the session, if the child is not having a good day, you might need to be creative on the spot. You might need to be flexible. You might need to improvise. But also parent and professional factors affected the development of engagement during telepractice. So a family said that I'm comfortable doing it, supporting the child. And I think that the reason for this is probably because I have four children. So I have plenty of hands-on experience with children. So in this case, and all their parents that had similar uh, professional backgrounds or working experience to what the professionals delivering early intervention services had, sort of facilitated the way that they engage with children as well. So keep that in mind. And to get to know this, you need to invest some time getting to know your parents. The third theme is about engagement is an investment. And as any investment you require time you require consistency and we also need technology so family engagement in telepractice is a process and will continue being a process that is built over time and that needs to be maintained over time with technology either facilitating or hindering child and family engagement so we have a few quotes like any relationship engagement engagement just needs time so you need to invest that time in building explicitly engagement with the families. I believe it's the consistency. We know on Fridays that we see ex-professional. It's very constant, very routine. So it's easy to maintain that relationship. For some families, that consistency, every single day of the week that happens, and that also helps the child to sort of predict what might happen. The child, and that's the benefits of technology, but also how technology can, can also hinder the engagement. The child took professional out for a walk and showed her some little bits and pieces of what he was interested in. But the same family said that we do it on a phone. So it's quite small screen. So sometimes I feel like because it's so small that he is just, just not interested in the session. So technology can have these, these dual um, features of uh, facilitating but also hindering or making the interaction difficult. We need to maximize the communication interaction during telepractice sessions. So encourage children and families to engage with professionals. The importance of reciprocal communication is also important. We talked about it earlier. And professionals being conscious of their communication style while interacting with children and parents is also important. And some of the strategies are about that. Being conscious while being on camera being being conscious and aware of the style of communication that you do being more explicit remember that we're just using these screens so we sort of see shoulders and up so everything needs to happen in this tiny square and we need to be aware of raising our hands sometimes being more more um, exaggerated on camera sometimes changing the tone of voice sometimes moving closer to a camera sometimes further away from the camera and uh, some family said, it's just to know that we're doing the right thing here as well. When we don't have a professional at home with us all the time, so 
communicating with the parent and knowing that the, the professional is there providing this coaching, this support is important for parents. Learning about her as a child and the style she has in communicating and then how I can modify my communication to suit hers is one professional said about learning about the style that the child prefers. How to communicate with every single child is important and adjust our communication style to suit the child's preferences. And a family member also said, professionals had not to only look engaged, but also they need to be present in the actual session. So take the time to sometimes look at the screen, that tiny spot there. You might have a very boring wall behind you, but your family is just behind the tiny spot. So look at the camera, try to, to build that trust. That's a very good way of engaging with them. And the fifth theme was about joint planning and preparation facilitated child and family engagement in telepractice. So professionals plan and adjusted telepractice sessions to maximize child and family engagement. And professionals and parents took advantage of the home environment to engage with children during telepractice. So one of the quotes that really represent this is, he likes to be at home. This is where he's comfortable. So he does better here than me trying to drag him out of the house, driving 40 minutes down the road where he would fall asleep in the car, then go out, do half an hour speech session, and then wouldn't be interested at all. And one of the professionals said that the only way that I think engagement is different over telepractice is that we are able to use what's in the home. So keep in mind that you are the same great professional your competencies, your skills, your great activities are still the same. The setting is the only thing that we are changing through telepractice. So you need to find out ways of continuing being the same great professional, adjusting your activities now through the computer. But it needs a bit of time for planning to get used to it, but you will be the same great professional through the screen. And as you already know, there is a few um, ideas from families, from professionals about how to better engage, but we still needed to identify which strategies, which behaviors are important to display while interacting with families. So based on that, we designed an EDELFI study using the findings from these two previous studies, a qualitative system review and the interview study that set the foundation of my PhD and are the findings that we just share. So we needed to further identify which are the critical behaviors to engage with families. So based on my system of review, we targeted a panel of experts, professional experts in telepractice and pediatric communication difficulties. And after two rounds of feedback, we identify 64 behaviors that were, according to experts, essential for engagement in the telepractice setting. And these behaviors are later break down, so don't stress about not seeing what's being there but we identified 36 professional behaviors that were important for engagement, 21 behaviors that parent or caregivers should display while interacting with professionals, three behaviors that children should display in order to enhance, to promote the engagement, and also four behaviors that a therapy assistant or support person, support staff might need to display in order to facilitate professional and family engagement. So these 64 behaviors, when you think about it, sounds like a lot, but these behaviors are also sort of arranged by the moment of the telepractice interaction, interaction in which they happen. So first of all, we need to get to know each other. So there were five behaviors ab about building rapport with families, but also asking the family about their previous experience with technology that could as well sometimes help with the family engagement because they had previous experience with the format. Even though it's about chatting with, with family members through Skype, through Zoom, through WhatsApp, FaceTime, whatever. It is important that we also display behaviors that are family-centered, which are about encouraging the child's and parents' input and collaboration during the session, adjusting the services to satisfy the individual needs of the family discussing and setting goals together with the family, listening to their concerns, listening to their questions, and providing them feedback about the questions, their inquiries, but also preparing parents for carry over these activities into the home environment. That is extremely important. They can learn how to do it during the session, so they have better options 
of implementing those activities later down the track. And there are also a few behaviors about telepractice specific consideration that are about, like we just talked about, um, using a natural communication style while interacting in the telepractice format, but also troubleshooting with families and assisting families to overcome any technology or technological issue that might happen during the session and have some sort of like an emergency plan. What happens if, and, and then like a Q&A or like FAQ, sorry, FAQ document for, for families to also sort all of these issues out. So it's important that we uh, keep all of these behaviors in mind and we deliberately plan to sort of offer this, these opportunities for families, particularly at the beginning of, of the interaction, at the beginning of the intervention, when we're just getting to know each other. So we need to dedicate some time to build that relationship with, with families, plan along with families, check in with them and catch up with families, like having a natural conversation, having that small talk that we have when, when from the main entrance of the center to the clinic room. We don't have that time now to walk in with the family and have that small talk to catch up with them. So we need to deliberately have those interactions with the family. So I know you are there, Felipe, just give me those strategies, but I'm telling these strategies in just a few more slides. So I'm building up your expectation as well with, with these strategies. So we know that there are a few strategies, but it's important that we also measure the engagement of families. So just as a reflection, for you, how do you measure the engagement of your clients in person? How do you measure the engagement of your clients, of your families through telepractice? How do you gauge it? Which tools do you use? Do you, are you aware that there are some tools available to measure child and family engagement? So in the next slide, I've provided you with, with the tools that are currently being used and why these tools may not necessarily be appropriate to measure telepractice engagement. Excuse me. So the first study from Aneka Freckman used the Therapeutic Alliance Scales for Children Revised. Melissa McCarthy used the SPICY, uh, the Scale of Parental Involvement and Self-Efficacy. And uh, the study from Bell and colleagues used the Home Visit Rating Scales Adapted and Extended. So as you can see, there are a few tools that have been used to measure certain aspects of engagement. But the task was developed to assess um, the alliance of children admitted in psychiatric wards with children with mental health problems. The SPICY questionnaire was developed to measure the involvement of parents of children who had hearing loss. And the home visit rating scales adapted and extended was designed, originally designed, to measure family engagement, parent and child engagement in in-person um, settings. So there may be a few aspects of engagement, telepractice engagement that may not necessarily be covered by these existing tools. So like I mentioned, in-person intervention is different to telepractice early intervention. Self-report measures that are some of these, these measures, these tools that are available are convenient, but also rely on the participants' capacity to recall what they think they have done and how they think that they have rated it. And like I told you before, there are certain features of engagement that happens in the telepractice environment that may not necessarily look the same as in in-person uh, interaction. So we need to deliberately get to know each other. We need to be aware of our communication style during the interaction with families and, and, and children. We need to set up an appropriate telepractice environment to take advantage of the telepractice setting. So all of these aspects need to be deliberately afforded and encouraged during telepractice um, early intervention. So based on that, we wanted to develop a specific tool to measure telepractice engagement. So we recruited 16 professional family diets across seven um, Australian organizations providing early intervention services, we video recorded 45 telepractice appointments for children with these diagnoses um, that were aged two to seven years old. All right, so we video recorded these 45 appointments and we used the 64 behaviors that I just presented in my previous study. 
And what we wanted to do when you think about it, having a checklist, having a tool to measure engagement, having 64 items is like a lot. So we wanted to reduce the number of items from that tool. So we did uh, a principal component analysis. Um, we used principal component analysis and we reduced the number of items from 64 to 24. So we ended up having 16 professional items divided in four principal components that I'll show the items in, in a few more slides. And we ended up having eight family items that were divided in seven parent or caregiver items and one child item divided in two main principal components. So in terms of psychometric properties, the tool has quite good psychometric properties if you are interested, but I think that you'll be more interested in knowing how to measure engagement. So I've included here all of these professional components for you to have a look. And once this study is published, feel free to use this tool because it's preliminary validated because we might need 500 videos to have a full validation study. But the preliminary psychometric properties are quite good. So have a look. So professionals might need to interact directly with the parent and caregiver in the telepractice session or in the telepractice environment to enhance the engagement with families and have a look at, at, at these behaviors. And I'm going to go through the, the, all of these components for you to have a better idea. So this tool is called the Engagement in Telepractice Observational Tool, also known as the eTort tool. So the professional component two, all the things that we might need to be aware of is to get to know the child and the family to get them engaged, uh, to keep them, keep them, sorry, motivated in the intervention. And we might need to maximize the telepractice environment. So have a look at these behaviors that may need to be displayed, that might need to be afforded while interacting with families. Professional component four is about demonstrating and practicing the parent caregiver's role as agent of therapy. We need to intentionally highlight the parent's role in supporting their child. We need to upskill them for them to become an efficient agent of therapy. But also the family needs to display a few behaviors to engage with each other because you know it is mutual, it is reciprocal. So the parent caregiver needs to interact and support their child, which will show us that they are actively involved that will increase, that will enhance the engagement that we have in the session that may even improve the parent-child relationship because they are having this dedicated one-on-one -on -one parent child time. And the, the child and parent also need to collaborate di directly with the professional. They need to provide input. The child, where appropriate, might need to interact with professionals. So that is important. And in this tool, obviously, using if, if you decide to use this tool later on the track or just bear in mind these behaviors, it's important that we analyze which behaviors are present so we continue displaying those behaviors. But it's important that we observe which behaviors are somehow inconsistent across telepractice sessions or those that are, not abs that are absent despite opportunity to be displayed. And why is that? Because we need to make sure that we are affording these opportunities so the engagement of family is better. So we have deliberately um, decided not to include an overall score because the aim of this tool is intended to be used as a self-reflection tool for us, for, prof for professionals to identify the current practice we're doing so we can improve the engagement of our families. We might need to guide families and explain them how we want them to interact with us and we might need to set those boundaries with them. All right, but we need to make the time to build and set the foundations for that unique engagement. And I know that you are all waiting for more um, tangible strategies. So the next two slides are about more strategies, starting with professional strategies that are pragmatically organized in these aspects of the telepractice interaction. So make sure that you read this through you might pause the recording if you're watching it later down the track so you can have a closer look to the strategies that are a good chunk of strategies. You might decide to use some strategies early on in your interaction with families. Some of these strategies may need to be displayed only at the beginning. Others 
in the middle of your interaction, or in the middle of your intervention, so you maintain the engagement with your family. And I'm aware of the time, so I'm just moving on to the next slide. And you all know that it takes two to tango. So I also have a few strategies that families may need to display while interacting with you. And I'm getting to the end of this presentation. All right, so just bear in mind that families also will need to engage with us. And these are a few ideas, a few strategies for you to coach with families, to talk with families about it, for them to engage with you, because engagement is mutual. It happens with one another and it's not magically constructed after two, three sessions. It needs to be continuously built along with them. All right, so I'm aware of the time. You have the strategies there, so you can pause the recording later down the track. So the take home message of this presentation is that child and family engagement is facilitated when the principles of family-centered practice are adhered to, such as relationship building, collaboration and communication inside and also outside the appointment. Elder intervention professionals are able to overcome the challenges of telepractice through hard work and also preparation. So make sure that you are prepared for delivering telepractice services. Professional development opportunities may assist professionals, and not only professionals, also students. Students, you have a huge responsibility on your shoulders as well on how to use telepractice effectively and engage families of children with communication difficulties. Evidence-based guidelines are also needed to assist us and services to engage with new models of service delivery that benefit continuity of care provision. Unlike any relationship, Building engagement in the telepractice environment is feasible. Despite all the challenges to engagement that telepractice entails, both professionals and families overcome these challenges by deliberately getting to know each other, collaborating with one another, communicating inside and outside the therapy th sessions, and navigating together every child's intervention journey. The provision of family-centered telepractice enables families to feel equally empowered and, and supported to satisfy the communication needs of their child and achieve intervention outcomes in the child's and family natural communication environment. These are the references that I use and I'm uh, handing it over to either Mel or Annette because I have planned a wrap up slash quiz for you all but I'm aware of time as well. So I'm waiting to get your feedback before I run into this activity, which is quite easy. But let um, me know Felipe, your thoughts do on you, that. Do you have time, Felipe? Because it's it's people can leave if they haven't got time. But um, I do. Yeah, if you have time, then I think people who want to stay may may want to join you in a quiz. That sounds cool. All right, we're well, jumping onto that one then. So we have a quiz here. So I'm going to start the quiz once you are ready. This is just a wrap up session for those who have to leave. Uh, my pleasure to be sharing my findings with you. Hopefully this is helpful. Thank you, Fern, for your comment in the chat. Thank you so much. You have my email if you um, want to touch base afterwards. So we're waiting for you to join the session. So you can go to menti.com. We have 10 players. Thank you, Mary. All right, we have 23 players, 24. Thank you for those commenting in the chat. Hopefully that's helpful for you. It is always important to reflect and we are just kicking off the quiz wrap up session before we open up the Q&A session if you want. What is the area diagnosis with the highest number of 
papers published on pediatric communication difficulties. Time's up. Let's have a look. So it was autism spectrum disorder, very close uh, with speech and language difficulties. Let's have a look. Oh, it does have a scoreboard. Wow, very good. Thank you for your participation. Let's have a look. Good one, Christy, the fastest. Let's move on to question two. Answer fast to get more points. What are the advantages of telepractice early intervention? Just read all the answers carefully. Time's up. More family center, it enhances parent can give a sense of competency, the entire family family can get involved and it happens within the family's natural communication environment. All of these were uh, advantages of telepractice. That's great. Thank you so much for your answers. Let's see who had fastest fingers. You can see who were writing down notes. Beth. It's the fastest, Mel, A, and Vivian, Sarah. Good job, everybody. Question three out of four. This is not a long quiz. This is just a wrap up. What is the best way of building and maintaining child and family engagement during telepractice interaction? By providing family center services, by crossing your fingers, or by improvising in every single telepractice session? Even though it sounds common sense, uh, it's it's interesting. You need to provide family center services, which is nothing new. Uh, but we might need to be flexible enough to improvise when needed. So it's not wrong, completely wrong. But I only could choose one answer as the correct one. Wow, that's great. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Beth remains at the fastest. Good one, Beth. And the last question is about Have you learned something new about telepractice engagement? Yes. Yes. And I feel more confident in using it with children and families. Nope. But I realized that I'm on the right track. All right, that's really good to hear that you have learned and realized something new. That comes to um, the end of my presentation. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. That's my email again, if you like to touch base. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's everyone I had prepared for you today.